Hello and welcome to Chris's Retro Corner. I'm Chris, this is my Retro Corner, and this is my Atari 800XL. In previous videos we've seen this unboxed and had a first look at it. And in the most recent one I opened it up and had a, a quick snoop around the circuit board. Um, interestingly, the keyboard that wasn't working in the first video seemed to mysteriously start working. So quite happy about that and I've done some finding out about the keyboard itself and also more importantly about the circuit board that's in this micro. So let's have a, a quick look around the board. Only very loosely put this back together because uh, as you saw me struggle to take the board out I didn't want to put it back in and then have to take it back out again uh, sort of to do a, a clean up of this board so there we go. pop those to one side we'll have a, a closer look around this board this will be a, a whirlwind tour of my Atari 800 XL Revision D uh, system board. Okay, so over here uh, we've got the RAM chips. Um, so there's eight 8 kilobit uh, ICs down here, giving a, a total of 64K um, for the machine. Um, the two next chips, I'm going to skip one and come back to it, and I'll tell you why in just a second. So this this one here is known as the Antic, which is the alphanumeric television interface controller. Now this is a custom um, display microprocessor. Uh, it has five text modes, um, 11 graphics modes, and it generates the pixel data stream um, representing uh, game play field, text and then other graphics and it passes it on to um, the GTIA and this is what this is this is the graphic television interface adapter and its primary function is to generate the color and luminescence signals um, to the data stream given to it by the Antec chip as well as any other player graphics or sprites um, that need to be displayed on the screen and then this passes the information over to and out of um, either the monitor port or the, the RF modulator. Um, the next one across here is going to be uh, our 6502C CPU or Sally um, and this runs at 1.79 megahertz. Now it's a custom in-house Atari produced version um, of the popular MUS Technologies 6502 series of microprocessors. Um, the 6502 series uh, are found in a number of uh, 80s 8-bit micros, um, notably the Apple II, the Commodore VIC-20, uh, the 64 and the 128, um, both the Electron and BBC from uh, Acorn, uh, and all the Atari 8-bit systems use derivatives of the 6502. Um, so the next one across we've got here uh, the PIA or the Peripheral Interface Adapter. This is a, a general purpose uh, I.O. chip. It monitors the XY axis um, from the controller interfaces um, and the, uh, the serial input output lines and occasionally has a, uh, a regulation of the um, MMC. Um, the memory management unit just at the top here but we'll come back to that in a second um, next chip across is the pokey chip now this stands for um, potentiometer and keyboard and this chip handles uh, serial io data um, and then the scanning of inputs from potentiometers so if you had paddles connected um, to the controller interfaces um, so it's looking for signals from that, as well as the keyboard as well, it's our, it's our keyboard connector here. Um, but most most well known, uh, really, the most well known function of the Pokey chip is that it's responsible for the audio generation from the, from the 800 um, via four semi-independent audio channels. Um, and in Atari circles, the Pokey chip is, uh, is, is quite well known. 
Um, I mentioned it earlier, we'll come back to it. So the memory management unit, just over here, um, manages address lines and control signals um, to all the main chips uh, on the board um, and includes a, a programmable logic array as well. Um, moving on, we've got the, the that's a, a quick thing, having to remember because I'm learning this as, as well as sort of uh, telling you guys about this board as well. I'm having to learn it first, of course. Let me have a quick thing. I think that's the, um, that'll be the OS run. So that's holding the operating system um, for the 800. Uh, I think I think that's a, a, a 24K ROM. Oh, I could be wrong. Um, the last one up here is the basic ROM. Um, so it holds Atari basic version B, I think. Um, so that's the programming language that when you boot up the machine um, you can start typing away on a, on a program if you wish. Um, and apparently if you've got a cartridge inserted in the cartridge slot um, it'll override that and it will just, it'll just boot straight to the cartridge so it won't try booting into the, uh, into the basic language. Um, so other things around the board. We've got the, the power switch over here and the power connector. The RF modulator, um, so it's taking the uh, it's taking the signal from the GTI over here um, and then putting it out to a TV. Um, alternatively, we can go out via the um, monitor port here. So you've seen me use that before. Um, what else have we got? Obviously the cartridge interface here. Uh, we've got the parallel bus interface over here as well. And this allows a direct connection to the address data and control lines on the board um, for externally collect connected peripherals. Um, we've got the serial input output interface over here uh, as well. Um, so most notably for disk drives and tape drives, although there are other things this can do. Um, in my in my investigation, I note there's a, a chap involved in this uh, that then went on to be involved in um, early iterations of the USB uh, interfaces. So the um, the universal serial bus um, and this does work in a, in a very very similar fashion so it's a, almost a forerunner uh, of a USB connector that um, and uh, moving on we've got the controller interfaces the regular nine pin Atari standard uh, controller interfaces and then finally the, the keyboard interface over here so that's a, a quick whirlwind tour of the board um, and yeah while we've, while we've got this, while we've got this out, we'll give it a, a quick dusting over and uh, and a little bit of a clean up. So let the clean up commence. You can see the uh, the board that wasn't under the RF shield here is uh, substantially dirtier, or well, dustier at least anyway, um, than, than what was protected over here.
that side. Done. Got a feeling that might be the easiest side to do. So let's see how we get on on this side. That looks like has the board cleared up. Smashing stuff. Okay, let's just double check that it's actually going to work still. I've not induced a problem. Got to have a got to have a trick to uh, <laughs> to get that cable back in. Let's double check if this is still going to boot up. And we look like we're in business. Brilliant stuff. We've had a look around the system board on this Atari 800 XL. We've identified the main chips on the board, cleaned the board up, double checked it's still working, <laughs> and uh, and yeah. In the next video, we'll do a, a clean up of the of the plastics. Bit of a rough going over the, the keyboard as well just get it looking a little bit more ship shape and then we'll start looking at how we go about loading programs into the 800 well again thank you for joining me and i look forward to seeing you again in another video soon